now with us, reporter extraordinaire oh, Richard no. Wolf He's from gone. Newsweek. Yeah. You guys are having way too much fun without me. <laughs> All right, Richard, uh, you want to talk about fun. Uh, the White House shakeup, man, that's fun. <laughs> you need to get out more. <laughs> well, that's entirely true, actually. So, uh, uh, Richard, let me start with this question. Uh, yeah. It seems to, it, well, it, it seems, and, and this is a, a pointless debate we had on the show, and not even really a debate, just I'm curious, uh, how much uh, it seems that Josh Bolton has uh, is flexing his muscle, whether it turns into to real uh, decision-making muscle, I have no idea. Uh, you, your thoughts, you certainly know better than I. Uh, well, yes, he does work for the decider, as you pointed out. So decision making rests with uh, the decider in chief. But yeah, look, he is um, uh, he is making real changes. It is not cosmetic, um, and power in the White House is generally a zero sum game. It's not like uh, you know they initially spend it as. Uh, for instance, Karl Rove's move. You know, we're just focusing him on what he does best. Uh, no, actually, Karl lost power, and Josh Bolton took it away and gave it to his sidekick, a guy called Joel Kaplan. Um, hmm. Will that make any difference? I, I think, you know, it does make a difference to the sort of competence question, which the administration has especially faced over the last year or two. Uh, but does it fundamentally change the, the, the direction of policy or the president's numbers? No, I don't think so. Well, I mean, uh, you know, the agenda is pretty much set. Uh, yeah, I, I, that I, I certainly agree with. That's, uh, it seems a, a ridiculous thing to, to even uh, suppose. But I thought one thing that was curious was, uh, was this notion that uh, Tony Snow – uh, and whether that he doesn't that he has unusual access that he has what's called walk-in access right. to both uh, the Oval Office and to Josh Bolton's office. That was the first thing that gave me indication that that if that were true and if that is significant that that, that Bolton is a might be a, a relatively powerful figure in, in in the White House if it's important to be able to walk into Bolton's office without they, sort of setting what? a meeting. They all had walk-in access. Um, all of them. All the assistants to the president, there are like, I don't know, 16 or 18 of them, in theory, all had that ability to walk into the Oval Office. Um, and as one senior White House official told me, uh, uh, the, Scott McClellan's problem was not access to the Bushes, since he actually had a much better relationship with the Bush family than most other people there, given that he'd worked for them since 1999. Right. Um, so that isn't as important as it sounds. What will be much more important, uh, a sign of, of what Tony Snow has negotiated, is whether uh, whether he can write his own talking points or whether he can drift away from his talking points, what happens when he does that. Um, and, and the answer to all of those things is we're just going to have to wait and see when he, when he finally does that. Uh, but the whole FaceTime with the president, I mean, you know, that I, I, it's not as big a deal as they're making out. Okay. Uh, I hear you. We're talking to Richard Wolf for Newsweek. I want to get back to Tony Stone in a second. I have predictions. Everybody get ready. I have predictions. Richard, get out a pen. You'll want to write <laughs> okay. them down. Uh, by the way, you're, uh, you know, I was the one arguing that Bolton has no actual power, so one of your pieces kind of proves me wrong. I'm Let, very dissatisfied with that, Richard. At a later date, <laughs> at a later date, Cenk and Richard, let's bring, seriously, let's get Richard on this program. And I want to play Dave Kohler's America with, with Richard Wolf. Oh, that'd be ba fun. Badly, and I think he'd be good at it. That'd right. be fun. Just for right. another time. Uh, another time. Like, Anytime, guys. Is that game? Do <laughs> <laughs> we right. put money down on it? Is that, that legal? Well, we can happen. Oh, can happen we, bed. Of course you can. Okay. <laughs> we could put money on anything. Trust me. Okay, so now. Now, uh, let's talk about Roe for a second before we get back to Snow. You mentioned the demotion, that he's lost real power. It's gone to, you know, obviously Josh Bolton to some degree, and then to his, uh, to his guy, Joel Kaplan. Uh -huh. Now, uh, that's one possibility, and I'm s certain that that's happened, with, you know, in reality. But the question, I think, is, the, or I should say, in my mind, the better question is, why is that? Is it because Bolton has gained more power and they were really convinced that uh, Carl was not doing a good job there? Or could it possibly be, as Jennifer Palmieri was on the show yesterday, she was talking about she worked in the Clinton White House for eight years, right. and she says, no, it's far more likely that they're concerned about the indictment that Rove might get. Obviously, he was uh, in front of the grand jury yesterday, and that they did the announcement of Tony Snow yesterday to kind of obscure that score, story to some degree. Oh. And, and to get out in front and, and sort of having already demoted Rove in case he is indicted and they have to fire him. Oh, that's a good theory. Oh, well, <laughs> they're not that good. Uh, they're really not that good. Um, 
uh, number one, uh, yes, people are worried. All of these, all of the statements are true. That doesn't mean to say they're all interconnected. Right. Uh, yes, they are worried about indictments, uh, especially about Carl's future. That is true. Uh, especially worried because they really have no clue what's going to happen, um, and they keep asking members of the press what's going to happen, and we have no clue either. So that tells you how bad the information is. Where are the leaks that, that, that coming from? From Rove's people themselves, is that the witnesses testify and then their lawyers leak the information? Because that seems to the limited information that we do well, get about the grand jury. I can only say this because I don't really report on the whole legal side of the story, but um, the leaks are not coming from. Fitzgerald's office. Right. They are. They're coming from lawyers involved in it. Um, so you make your own conclusions, okay. and, and that's not a comment on anybody's sources or stories or whatever. Um, <clears throat> other things. Um, you know, did they do Tony Snow now because they wanted to divert attention away? Well, they wanted to do Tony Snow now because uh, a they had lined things up. Uh, b they wanted to move quickly and keep up the momentum of the re-energized White House, right. which is a storyline that is serving them pretty well right now. Yeah, it definitely is. And um, uh, what else did Jennifer say? Um, that it was done to divert, just to divert attention and then to get out in front in case Rose indicted. That was essentially... No, so basically to say, hey, you know, look, we already demoted the guy. What more do you want? You know... You no, because if, if Carl gets indicted, he's out of the White House. You cannot be indicted and stay in the White House. Yeah. And, and if there was any debate around that, you know, um, uh, uh, Libby, uh, Libby's move, uh, you know, him leaving the White House immediately, that, that sort of clears that up. If, if, uh, uh, and I know this from my own reporting. If Rove gets indicted, he, he's out. Mm -hmm. um, you, you really can't do – you can't be an indicted White House official and still walk into the West Wing every day. I hear you. It's just, it, it seems strange, and I'm sure it must seem strange to Bush, too, the idea of losing Rove, because it seems like Rove and, and Cheney are such a, the, the people he relies on so much that if they were at somehow, you know, if Cheney were to leave at some point and Rove had already gone, it seems like how would the decider even decide things? <laughs> but, but I mean, I mean, there's a lot of seriousness in that, in that he uses Rove so much, I'm not sure he trusts anybody else, including Bolton, yeah, I, to, to make decisions. And that's right. That is totally right. You know, um, uh, Rove lost power within the bureaucracy, but he, he hasn't lost influence with the president, as far as I can tell from my sources. That's a different situation from Cheney. Cheney really is a, a declining power inside the White House and has been uh, for the whole of the second term so far, and really since Iraq turned downwards. Um, and the Libby thing really only confirmed that uh, so Cheney is not the influence he used to be, although, you know, he can still throw his weight around when he wants to, and people were very sensitive about how much they could get him to do when he shot his friend, uh, for instance. But Carl, Carl does, uh, is, and will always be influential. Um, frankly, he'd be influential whether he was in the White House or not. Right. I mean, he's um, it, it doesn't really matter what, you, you, what title you give him, but... Um, he did not do a good job of running the White House policy, and, and his signature, um, his signature uh, issues were things like immigration, and that hasn't worked out. Social uh, security. Social security was his deal, and that obviously was a spectacular failure. Um, you know, th and, and people in the White House know that, including the president. So you know, we has he lost stature for that? Yes, it means that Carl, in spite of what his own self-image was, you know, he could do politics and policy – you know that dream is over. He's a he's a political guy, and and you know everybody knows it. And the the, the more serious aspirations that he he, he had uh, are, are over. Uh, we're talking to Richard Wolf from Newsweek, and I just it occurred to me as you were talking there that uh, imagine people uh, tuning into this program and and not who don't follow a. a you know, politics on a regular basis, and it's just great that we've reached the point where we can offhand say, you know, it was curious how much you could get the vice president to say after he shot his friend, and people be like, what, the vice president shot somebody? <laughs> Whatever, right. no big deal, we forget. Now, you mentioned... We Rove. attacked the wrong country? <laughs> yeah, that doesn't matter. Um, uh, if Rove is indicted, or if the cloud gets so great that he has to leave the White House, of course, he still has some personal influence with the president, but as far as sort of controlling the the the, the political message leading up to the 2006 midterm elections, if you're not there every day, somebody else will step into that void. He may still be powerful, but, I mean, uh, other guys who want to make that happen are not just going to sit back and wait for Carl to call. Uh, yes, uh, 
To some extent, yeah, but it's not that usual to have the, the political advisor inside the White House. That, um, it, it, and to have a staff position with a nice big West Wing office. Uh, you know, they, they have... They have merged the political functions um, and the policy functions yeah. more than any other administration. Yeah, I was uh, going to say. And, I... and, that, and that obviously didn't really work uh, when they took it to the highest level, which was Karl Rove running policy in the White House. But, you know, Karl's position inside the White House is more influential than any of the yeah, – every president has some sort of political sidekick like him, a strategist that they lean on. But – They've generally kept them at, at some kind of distance uh, for a number of reasons, mostly to sort of insulate themselves. Um, uh, you know, right. so it's never clear how much influence they have. Uh, they, the president can always rise above the political fray. But this is not what they've decided to do in this White House. And, and while things were going well, it looked like it was a great formula. Obviously, when things went badly, everyone said, gee, you know, maybe this whole political – politicizing everything wasn't the best thing for the president. Well, Richard, of course, it depends on your priorities. Uh, I think for a long time, especially in the two most decisive things, uh, or the one most decisive thing in their first term, which is getting reelected, it did work. It worked on the political side. Now, how much they cared about the policy side is another issue, and it didn't work on the policy side. But obviously, since they emerged uh, in an, uh, what seems to be an unprecedented way – they cared more about the politics of it. And frankly, I don't even know why Karl Rove gets paid by the American people to do politics for the Republicans. I just, well, yeah, and that's another reason why presidents haven't done that. Yeah, I, and I think it's totally wrong. But again, it's another thing that we've gotten so used to that we just kind of glide by it. Uh -huh. by it. But hey, now, listen, so I remember in the end, the closing days of the, of the 2000 campaign, Dick Cheney would go around pledging that their administration would, would, would mark the end of the permanent campaign. And, and actually, they, actually, they took it to another level. Yeah, they definitely did. Now, uh, Tony Snow, uh, here are the three possibilities, as I see. First of all, he's clearly going to have a honeymoon uh, period with the press. He's a part of the press. Sure, we yeah. want him to like us. Yeah, of course, of course. And he's, he's a great guy. I love him. Uh, see, there you go. You by, see that? by the way, do you know him? Already. Do you know him? Never, never, never met him, but I'm sure he's a great guy, and I love him. <laughs> he's got great sneakers. We have met him. It's, and good hair. Yeah, good good hair as well. Now, uh, but I predict that there's three possibilities of what happens with Tony Snow, and I keep a total open mind about it. I think there's some chance that he'll get in there and – uh, they will s tell him, all right, now you got to cover up for this, that, and other thing, whether it's the leaks or the Valerie Plame or the NSA warrantless spying, and you got to tell him hey, all the Democrats are with al-Qaeda. And he might react by saying, okay, what am I going to do? This is the job, and buy into it. In which case, I think he will earn the wrath of the press pretty much as quickly as McClellan did, and it's the same old story with just a new guy delivering it. Or he might rebel against it and quit in frustration. And which I think if he does do that, I think would be a, a great testament to Tony Snow in a lot of ways. And I leave that open as a significant possibility. But there is a third possibility that would even speak more uh, well of Snow and the White House, which is that Snow says, no, 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 let's get back to conservative principles and stop with the nonsense. I don't know if that's possible. And by nonsense, I mean the illegal things, the cover-ups, the... You know, going outside of the, the old, law, the, the rule of law, the renditions, the whatever it might be. First of all, do you even think that that third possibility exists? No, 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 because <laughs> uh, uh, you know that would mean he is going to change administration, a press secretary is going to change administration policy on something like the war on terror. He, uh, you, I, I don't know what you think he's negotiated, but um, it ain't that. Even it if ain't they, that. And if they told him that and he believes it, then he's not quite as bright all as people. Right. So it's I, just then, basically, then in my mind, it's a matter of time before he turns into another McClellan or Rizzo. Richard? No, I, look, I, this is one way people have said it to me. Look, uh, um, uh, Scott McClellan delivered talking points as if they were talking points. What conceivably uh, a different press secretary could do is deliver talking points and make it sound convincing. Yeah. And uh, at the very least, he'll do that. You know, the question for us in the, in the press is whether he, he gets what we need, whether he understands that, whether he can make senior officials more open to talking to us, uh, whether they can explain policy. I was having a conversation with people at Fox News, and if you can believe it, they are frustrated with their access. <laughs> and what they say is if, when the administration – and this is remember, this is a Fox News people saying this when, – when the administration goes out and explains their policy – it's not just helpful for the media, but it's, it helps their own ends. And all of the 
biggest screw-ups have been when uh, when they haven't gone out to explain things. If the- and, and, you know, that's the Fox News perspective. So I, I imagine Tony Snow carries some of that with him. Uh, anything, look, I, I'm not saying that they're going to convince people, but I think generally it is right. It is more helpful to have administration officials arguing their case more in public. Uh, whether you believe it or not, the, the, the great American public can listen to it judge the arguments on the merits, and then make their own decision. You know, if he's just going to deliver talking points better, then it's like putting lipstick on a pig, and I'm not that interested. But Ben's got one last question for you. We'll have Go to ahead. Do, we'll have to do gas prices another day. All right. Well, real quick, Richard, uh, then the, you uh, you say that the Fox News pundit in your piece with Holly Bailey today says the Fox News pundit has already been a go-to guy for administration officials to get their message out. Yeah. I'm just curious, in, in 30 seconds or less, how – does that, I mean, really tangibly, how is that done? What do they do? Do they literally call him? Yeah, they the do. They've, do been they doing, they've been him? giving him radio interviews. When, when Cheney wouldn't talk to anyone, when Carl Rove wouldn't talk to anyone, they would call Tony Snow and talk to him right. on his radio show, uh, you know, and then say that they'd been talking and been open with the press. So, right. okay. you know, they trusted him, they liked him, but, you know, uh, there's a lot of spin out there saying Tony Snow is a journalist just like everyone else. Please. He's not. He's been in a special category. So basically they're cutting out the middleman here and uh, just not funneling the checks through Roger Rails anymore. That was a hassle, right? So, and, and I, Richard, I, I, like I said, he's a great guy and I love him. Absolutely. And, I, and I, I don't know if you guys are reporting this at Newsweek yet, but we're hearing Neil Cavuto is going to be the new Treasury Secretary. <laughs> really? And don't tell me uh, Lou Dobbs is going to run immigration policy. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Jack is trying that joke out on everybody. Right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Richard, thank you very much. We appreciate your time as always. Anytime. All right. All right. Young Turks, coming right back.